Thank you for joining us on the first ever podcast to the past rugby news. This is absolutely an epic day. I'm along with my co-host Raquel McLeod. Oh, hello. And I am Vincent McLeod. Hence the connection there. We're not brother and sister. No, we're definitely not. We are actually husband and wife, and we're talking about rugby. So this is phenomenal here. The past rugby news, this is all about hot, current rugby news. Nothing else, we just want to hear from you. We want to get the biggest and best stuff of today and cover it to the best we can. Please don't forget to follow us on our Twitter account at, at the Rugby Pass News and our Instagram, which we will be posting lovely photos, which is also under Pass Rugby News as well. Don't forget to hashtag us. Let us know what you're thinking. Don't let us know what you're thinking. We have plenty to talk about anyway. So we hope to hear from you soon, though. It's true. No junk no junk mails and posts either. We get those enough anyways. So just tell us what you want to hear. We want to hear from you guys as well. This is an open forum, and it should be a good one. So I think we should move into our first real topic about rugby. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Let's yeah. see. Well, let's look at, let's be honest today. Let's go to the Professional League in America, Pacific Rugby Premiership. And luckily, we are based in Los Angeles, California, so we have constant sunshine. So what better match to look at? Then Santa Monica versus Belmont Shores, week one. Week one. Well, the weather was beautiful. It was. All of 100 people showed up, which was kind of disappointing. And just for those of you who've never been to a professional rugby match in America, outside of the All Blacks playing in Chicago, if you can draw a crowd of 100, that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, pretty disappointed by it. However, great setup by Belmont. Good campus. Good field. Grass was green. Uh, wind was blowing, so couldn't complain about that. But I think what was more shocking than anything was actually the score. If you look at it, 29-28 to 28 to Belmont. If anyone knows Belmont or knows American rugby, you know Belmont's name is tied with winning. You would have expected something bigger and better. But honestly, I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, the first half was all Santa Monica. It was. Belmont was very sloppy the first half. Santa Monica showed some strong passing. I mean, it was clear that they knew where they wanted the ball to go. They were going back and forth, side to side, right? they all were. over the place. They they would move that ball from side to side, up and down the field whenever they wanted. They had that phenomenal block. That's true. By number nine, I believe it was credited to number nine of Santa Monica, Charlie, who actually blocked a pretty lazy pass by Belmont going back, failed to clear it in time, blocked it, scooped it up and scored underneath the post. So at that point, we were already three tries in. And it was looking like Santa Monica was coming for the upset here. Unfortunately, second half started and things began to turn the other way, sadly, yeah. for Belmont Santa Monica. decided to show up. Yep. They had some strong forwards. Yes, they did. Yep. They still were sloppy in their passing, but their forwards Week one. really okay. did the work, which isn't shocking in rugby. By far. Yeah, well said. That's That happens. Bad hands. It, it is what it is. But I will say the boot by Andrew Jackson for Belmont, number 14, pretty spot on. And for... Anyone who's also been to American Rugby matches, the first couple matches of the season are pretty rusty. But his boot was on. But I will say this about Santa Monica, though. Number 10, Harry Bennett, although he had the chance at the end to win the match. If he would have nailed his conversion, they would have won the game. He didn't. Forget about that, Harry. Australian mate, phenomenal. He played. He was my man of the match by far. Yeah, I mean, I think he was great. I still think he should have converted it. Okay. Well, that's, that makes the win. Well, that's why you're harsh and I'm delightfully nice, but I see your point completely. Um, what do you think going nice, forward? Yeah, delightfully well, in denial. That happens. But, but anyway. What do you think going forward for both teams? Well, these are two powerhouse teams. I don't yeah. doubt that both are going to have a great season. That's true. Um, if Santa Monica can play the same way they did the first half through a hole, yes. then I think they'll do better off. I think mm -hmm. Belmont has some great players. When do but they I not? actually wasn't as impressed as I usually am by Belmont. Agreed. So because really if you look home. at this, Belmont snuck in the win. And I don't like saying that with Belmont because they're usually a better attacking squad. But they snuck this one out. So I know the fans were excited, but you guys barely won. Yeah, well, the fans weren't that excited the first half. They were quite Yeah, that's concerned. true. Well said. Now, I will say this about Santa Monica. Hands down, by far, better Twitter, better Instagram, better media presence in general. And if you look at a team... On what might look like a professional team, Santa yes, Monica they definitely have a has the one. Well, for just for men, hey, that guy is delightfully amazing, better. and I've been to a few, Only and I've seen him once. Half the players on there aren't really Santa Monica. Well, players. doesn't matter. The point but is, you know what? we're in LA, yeah. so let's so, keep it LA. Yeah, well, you know, you had to take it there, but 
kudos to the gent who's doing that. We want to interview you eventually on your stardom because that's pretty epic and awesome. So, okay, I think they'll move forward great, both teams, and we will continue to look at the Pacific Rugby Premiership as the season goes on. But I think now we need to go on to the Switch for what is the big stuff that every rugby fan wants to hear about. Unless you're from the Southern Hemisphere, then tune out because we don't care about you. It's the Six Nations 2015. Probably the biggest time of the year for me and you, I would believe. Um, especially during a World Cup year. Yeah, that's true. We like to sneak that in too. Come September, October 2015, World Cup in England. So really, this is kind of a preview for a lot of these teams for the World Cup. Yeah, I think Very they're going to kink out some tricks and see what they're working best with before they hit that World Cup. And honestly, England doesn't want to look like a... Sad show. No, that's true, but maybe Italy wants to get serious for once, but I or doubt that. Or maybe Scotland will finally come that, to Well, we're going to talk about it. that later because that is a blasphemous statement. But let's look at the RB rankings. Let's do this. Three, Ireland, 85 points. England in second at 84 points and some change. So pretty top there. Then we jump down to sixth place in Wales. Then France, Scotland, round out eight. Then Italy, of course, brings up the tail at 14. They're always at the tail. Yeah, but at least they're better than Georgia, and we see that on there. At, but least, if you look at, at least they're a tier one nation. If we look at it, the clear favorites, maybe, according to the win last year, Ireland should be. Um, then again, I don't know. I mean, I've I seen more. There's never clear favorites, though. In yeah, the that's probably, that's, well, that's. That's true. Unless you're Italy. Then oh, unless we are, you're a fan. We always know. But we love Italy. Let, let's look. Who. Before I even look at the squads, I'm probably going to look at and say that Wales has been pretty dominant over the last five years of, of late. Six Nations of late. Um, England's had one in there. France has had one in there. Ireland's had two hit or miss. Um, of course, the teams that don't show up, Scotland and Italy, but that's because they choose to not. But that's a whole different Who discussion Who chooses not later. to win? Well, that doesn't matter. The point is... No, it does matter. The point is that they're comfortable at the bottom of the table, and we love them What for it that. does mean is that they play some phenomenal teams. Let's just put it out there. It's not like they're on a small scale. True. Now, what's an interesting show. point to me, though, is actually looking at these stats. Over 75 matches played, England has won 51 of them, and France is right behind them at 50. Ireland behind that at 49, then Wales at 40. And Scotland and, at 19. Yeah, and well, at 11. again, that's a really depressing statement to read, but of course, I'm always going to go for them. Going for Scotland. I'm always going for Scotland because everyone knows I'm a true Scotsman at heart, and that's. And everyone knows I'm a true American, topic, so I'm so. unbiased. So lucky for you guys, you will hear the nitty gritty goody too. I'm yeah, right. that's true. Now, let's, let's start looking at some lineups then. Let's look at the first week. Obviously, the first week is the biggest thing. On the planet, if you're into Six Nations. And what's even bigger is Friday the 6th, Wales versus England at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Holy crap bottoms. This is probably not what you want to see as an English fan. Probably what you want to see as a Welsh fan living in Shrewsbury, I would imagine. I mean... It's a great place to start. I don't like it. It'll I'm not comfortable with it. Okay. If I'm an English fan... Cardiff is very difficult to play in. They are going to drown the place out like crazy. I've heard reports England won't be able to hear, but they're saying it's totally fine anyways because they can't understand each other no matter what. So, but that's all joking aside. I think England will do very well. Um, I do think Wales will beat them, though. Sadly. I pick England, actually. I'm yeah, well, if Danny Cipriani gets the start, that would be awesome. Um, what frustrates me is Owen Farrell not being there because he obviously is delightfully talented. But I think this is George Ford's chance to step up and say, hey, man, now we have a number two. Let's go at it and battle. So it should be good. I'm excited to see Danny Care, see what he can do. Who isn't excited to see Yeah, him? well, keep your panties on because we'll talk about him later. But he is going to be very well, and I'm glad to see that he's been doing well with Quinns. Another one that we should talk about is Nick Easter making the squad. Right, and you is, have actually, is. we have actually both graced his seat at Twickenham back eh, about four years ago. Absolutely epically amazing. Um, maybe not as hot as Danny Care, but he's Sidebar, still though, is pretty finding cool. the beers underneath. Yeah, that well inside Twickenham was impressive. Was it, impressive, it was which kinda, is why yeah, I still vote. It was disappointing, but it was it was pretty awesome to see that guys could still be true to their core who they were. Um, okay, so who do you pick? Wales or England? England. First one. Well, okay. England by a try. Whoa. Okay, that's. Interesting. All right. Um, let's go then the second one. Italy, Ireland. Uh, besides who cares, but we'll touch it because we care. Are we really going to play this one? Yeah. We well, okay. We'll Ireland give that. Win. Okay. Okay. We'll give that to Ireland. Considering they're playing in Rome, 
But that's okay. Um, then, of course, the big one for me, at least, is France versus Scotland in Perry. That's a clear one. Yeah, a bunch of kilts coming across the channel. It's going to be a slaughter fest to Scotland. Everyone knows that. Scotland's going to win over 60 points, guaranteed. Okay, I see France. Well, okay, look. If you look By at the French tries, squad... At least. If you look at the French squad, no one cares outside of Matthew Bastereau, which is a tank. But he's a tank that needs a lot of fuel and doesn't get it. If they still had Vincent Clair, I'd be saying absolutely France. They don't. And to me, Did you Scot not just clearly tell me where France is in the stands? Yeah, it doesn't matter because if you look at their performances and you watch them like we have for many years now, they wins? you've seen that France is either really good or really bad. What happened in the World Cup? What happened Recently. to Scotland in the World Cup? Doesn't matter. We're talking about France right now. I'll talk about Scotland later. Right, but we're talking about France. But France Scotland. right now almost beat New Zealand. And it's probably because they're drunk on wine something, but despite the fact, they can show up if they choose to. It just depends on if they do or not. But I, I think Scotland... I do agree that if they show up for this game and slaughter Scotland yeah. like I think they will, then the next, the real test for France will be their next game. We too. Yeah, my disappointing thing, and Scotland, please cover your ears because I'm going to be negative for a second. But if you look over the last 15 years, only 85 tries have been scored by Scotland. Last place of all the Six Nations squads. Even Italy is above them with 89 tries. The leader would be 214 with England. Scotland has a problem scoring tries. With that said, we probably have the best 9 and 10s in the business. I'm going to get a lot of flack for that. I know it, but Greg Laidlaw, I love you, bro. You're going to do fine. Stuart Hawkins have a good game. David Denton's injured, so I'm not too thrilled on that one. Um, Owen Murray, I think he will do great, but... When he plays on Sunday, we all know he's not going to because he's religious, so that'll be a problem. Um, don't see Scotland doing as well this year. But Vern Cotter, I think, is really going to make they the team can turn around. They always take the Italy game, though. Yeah, well, last year, they only won last chance by Duncan Weir's drop. Doesn't hit. matter. A win so, is a win. Have which we I this? was already preparing to go eat some spaghetti and get angry, and Duncan Weir slotted that drop kick, and I so about lost it. Instead, you went to go have haggis. I did went and go have haggis, there but we can't. There will be a picture of that on Twitter. Amen to that. Don't forget, at Rugby News. Because we always, we always love kilts. Okay, so then we look at it. So we'll look at some strengths. Let's just go squad by squad and see really... Who we think are going to be the standouts there. Let's just start with Italy because they need our love too. Um, the only one, let's be honest, that I really care about is Sergio Aprici. Um, beast mode, everyone knows that. He's still obviously in good form all the time with Stade Francais. Outside of that, usual Castro Giovanni, I don't see a lot happening. Um, yeah, now Raquel, I know you're going to give some shout-outs to your favorite Italian player. Just, it, you got to throw him out there. I mean, he's going to be a beast mode at fullback. He is. Don't you agree? Mm, I don't have any favorites in Italy. No, well, okay. I'm, I'm referring trouble, to Luke McLean. He's got to step up because he's got an English name anyways. I think he'll be just fine on that one. Which will be another sidebar conversation later on yeah, for us. A whole other podcast yeah, but, on you playing know, on certain national teams. You yeah, know that's I feel true. about yeah, that, we but don't, I'm not going to touch like that right that. now. We'll okay, well then let's go to the other eye in the squad. Let's go to Ireland. Reigning champs. On this one, we don't have Brian O'Driscoll, which sucks. But we've moved on from that one. I think we will have Tommy O'Donnell should play well. Oh, he uh, will. Jamie, yeah, okay, easy again. Jamie Heaslip is always going to be a good one there. If Sexton gets his boot right, I think he'll be a really good fly at the attack on that one. Um, Darcy should be pretty good. And Rob Kearney, if he shows up, he is always one of those fullbacks that he is phenomenal attacking, just like he is in the defense, though. So Ireland has a good squad, I would say. Um... I'm comfortable saying they'll do well. I bet they'll come in second to Scotland, but I think Ireland I'm, I'm, has I a... think they'll be top three. Regardless. Okay, well, that's that's a safe way to say it, but that's fine. Um, let's go with Wales, then. Everyone loves the Welsh, even though we can't understand them, but we they still can't love understand them. Each other. I agree with that, and it's a lovely nation, though. I will it give is, a shout-out. Simru, you guys are pretty awesome. Um, the usuals, half penny, probably going to do pretty awesome, I would think. Oh. You are so generous with your eyes. Awesome I am, race. but I love them. I love everyone. I'm a lover. You know that. So, yeah. Dan Bigger should play well. I think I think Big Sam is going to play well, uh, I would think. I mean, he's clearly in form right now. That doesn't oh, yeah. surprise me in that one. Okay, he's easy, easy again. Priestland should play well. I would think Phillips will get a chance to run in. Roberts, the usual. So, I actually, if I'm going to say, I think Wales has probably one of the stronger teams that I'm seeing right now. Um, then again, maybe they don't show up. That's happened many times, and that's what the glory is of the Six Nations. 
No, I think Scotland, definitely- we've already talked about them. They're awesome, especially with Tommy Seymour in the squad, especially since we found well, out he was Scotland born in probably- Nashville, Tennessee, so he's kind of American. No, no, no. That, that makes him no, American. No, it doesn't matter. He's Scottish just like me, but I don't have my citizenship yet, and I'll get it eventually. Dunbar should be well laid law. Well, Scotland always Visser. has good players. That's not the issue. The issue no, is they, they can never convert. Yes. I agree. Um, you know, Big Jim Hamilton Talent needs to do something. This is just an angry country, but I love them dearly, and you need to win the Calcutta Cup this year so I can silence all the English fans there. Um, France, like I said, don't really care since Vincent Clair is not there, and everyone knows I have an affinity for him, not just because of the name, but because he's an amazing winger. <sighs> but that's okay. Whatever. We'll move on from that. Bastro should play well, I would think. Uh, look for Nicholas Moss to play well. That's really about it. Pick them all. I think he'll play pretty well. Outside of that, I don't see France doing anything. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to state the claim now that France is going to come in at last place to Italy. Italy is going to beat them. France will be the golden spoon. That's my prediction. No, I don't. Well, last... you're drunk, and I'm going to get you off the bottle now because that's yeah, crazy. It's going to happen. It has to happen. It can happen. It will really? happen. And then France will come back in the World Cup and make it to at least the semis. That's how France plays. And that's the beauty of French society. Am I am I wrong or right on that one? I'll take silence on this one for you. Okay, well you get can... worked up. Get just get too worked up. For I you. do. I get extremely I feel worked up. That it is going to be the year. Okay. Well, who's going to win then? Who's going to win all? Yeah, who's going to win the Six Nations? I feel like it's going to be Ireland again. Okay, well that's ridiculous. Ireland, but... England, mm-hmm. wow. Wales, France, wow. Scotland, Italy. Wow, that's pick. embarrassing. I stand on it. Okay. Well. My you, you pick your pony. my pick prideful your pony right my prideful you. national self will say Scotland is going to demolish and win every game and I don't care about that. Unfortunately, I Scotland rugby cover your earmuffs again, please. I'm sorry, but I have to be, I have to be objectionable and I have to be honest. But I do think that Scotland could win the Cup Cup. Cup. Mm, yes, definitely, and we've seen them, we've seen them tie, think that and England I think they'll win. win it all. Okay, but good. England's awesome. going to have a great showing for the awesome. World Cup. Okay, so then just I think. Crack. I think it will be, ready for this, I think it's going to be Wales, then I think it's going to be England, then I think it's going to be Ireland, then I think it's going to be Scotland, then I think it's going to be Italy, and then we don't really care about France. But I do, I love your country, I just don't think you're going to do anything this year. That's my prediction, and I think we're going to come back after each week and really look at our predictions and say Not if we're crazy that. I or think drunk. Injuries are gonna play a great big part. Of course they are and you have to look at club forms are still good with the European Cup and everything taking place. Plus I don't want to injure myself in the Six Nations if World Cup's coming up. Exactly. I have to be careful in that one. So this is a good thing for coaches. This is also a bad thing. I think you'll probably see interesting. So with that said, Scotland, this is your chance here. No one's gonna care this year. So you care and let's go slaughter and win. It's been a long time since 90 and a long time since 99. We need to get this back. It's been a long time period. Yeah, well, that's why we're married, because we love these topics. So now we're going to go to the point in the show that is probably everyone's favorite. Whether you're male or female doesn't really matter. We all know that rugby players are super freaking hot. Wicked hot if you're from Boston. So we're going to go through the six teams and pick the hottest players of them. There is nothing wrong with this, I just want you to say. I am married to my wife, who is lovely, and I have children. <laughs> this is awesome. Everyone knows abs are great. So let's just automatically start with Scotland for this one. Okay, because obviously Scotland comes first in my mind, they come first to me. For me, it's very slam dunk easy, because I've seen him, and we I've know. interviewed him. Tommy Seymour, you got my pick. You're a hottie, and your beard is pretty epic. So, Tommy... You got it. Although Ross Ford may have had a, you know, close second maybe for you if you like that. I but Tommy, you're seconds. the winner. It's one, Tommy, top, you're the winner for Scotland. Top top so body. now we jump to England. Let's jump okay, to England. Okay, England. Here we go. My pick, Danny Hare. Coming in at the top. Well, now, I will say, England has a few of the hotter players out of the most well, teams. I pick Danny Hare. That's true. I'm going to go with Tom Croft because I think he is awesomely, looks just like me at well above 6'5", but I think your pick on Danny Kerr is pretty right on, and women, if you don't follow rugby and you're only listening to this because your husband is drunk and passed out, I would definitely suggest Googling Danny Kerr. Oh, don't you wear. Danny Kerr is going to be on our Twitter and Instagram. Yes, all our picks here, in case you missed them, visually, 
We will put them for you on Twitter so you can really visualize Here we go. Let's them go there. next. Let's go to Italy. Italy, because I don't know any other Italian player that I've seen that is somewhat decent looking. <laughs> Sergio Parisi, you got my pick because you are a beast, and I love your back. Dude, you are ripped beyond belief, and your abs are crazy. Sounds good to me. Yeah, of course it does. But Let's Luke go. McLean, you're a close second, so I just want to throw that out. There. <laughs> of course, he has to yeah. be second best. Well, I always I've he's used to, he's, second. He's rooting for Scotland. Well, that's the way so it is. let's go. Next, we go to France. Ooh. I pick Bernard Larue. You are a hottie. Yeah, Larue. Home. I actually, I'm gonna. Uh, this is really tough. You would think this is tough for a married couple to talk about, but I actually agree with her, Bernard. You are a cutie. You're that cutie that I think guys could take. Um, well, that well, we're sounds really weird. Him, Holy moly, that, that sounds really weird. Fella. Let's just say you clean up well, fella. And France, that's why we love you. Yeah, next, no one else gets it. But if it's on Claire, go... you would get it if you're in the squad. Yeah, let's go with Ireland. Yeah. Ireland, Ireland. My vote, uh, and definitely my vote, is Tommy O'Donnell. That's just because I went with Tommy Seymour for Scotland, so you wanted to match it. But that's fine. Um, I actually agree with definitely you. Definitely Tommy is cuter than yours. Yeah, but that's we're just going to go there. That's thing. And I'm going to go with Gordon Darcy. Oh, I would take you to Darcy any day. Yeah, I know you would. But that's why I will be dressing up with him. Well, actually, as him on Halloween. So my wife will really, uh, I think it will be a good thing for us all. Um, and lastly, but not least. Yeah, Wales. Yeah, a lot of cuties here. Um, that sounds really bad, but you guys are all wickedly hot. I'm going to go with Mike Phillips, because if you've seen him play, that wow, man Wow, you really need is, to stop with the wicked and yeah, the cutie. Well, it's, yeah, I, I, I love these ghosts now. I do. Rugby has some studly men. They do. I think... I think Captain Sam. I think he uh, would make it up there. Uh, Everyone says his nose is a little off, but I think he's pretty chiseled no, no, too. No, no, he's definitely my vote. So basically, we didn't go with any props or second rows. Sorry, Sorry guys, guys, you just there's something but about there's still you. Time. There there's are still time. Yeah, because, because for me, this vote isn't just how hot you look. It's true. It's how well you can play and how well you can compose yourself in interviews. We don't want morons here. We want people. Like I said, you can bring them to mom and dad. This is rugby still. I've thought about this way too much, and it's clear that I have issues, but that's okay with it. Okay, so here we go. Our closing. We do need to move on. This has been, like I said, our first podcast of many. We will do weekly podcasts here, and we're going to talk about everything hot current in rugby union here, whether from 7s or 15s code. We're going to talk about it, and we want you to tell us what you want to hear from us too. Whether it's stuff that you don't want to talk about or you feel uncomfortable, Talk about it anyways. We want to hear it. So our next episode, actually going to be a pretty good one for all those in America asking, what's going on with the professional game? Are we going to have one? Are we not? News came out today. Hopefully that the British, Irish, Lions, Irish, oh my God. See, you already have me thinking Ireland. I knew it. I, I knew, knew it. It's the winners. I'm you looking at them it. and I, I this Scotland, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. So. Besides the point. The Lions may be taking on a U.S. side, probably the Eagles, the national side of the U.S., in 2017 as a warm-up to Australia. May happen, may not, we don't know. That's not the professional one I'm talking about, though. We're talking about a separate entity called the National Rugby Football League. Although it says league in it, don't get your panties in a bunch, it's union code, but this is a completely professional league separate from right. the USA Rugby. we're not going to get started on that topic right now. No, though. we're not. We'll definitely tune in for that next week. Yes. And make sure you listen in to us. Follow us at Rugby News, at Rugby News Instagram, Twitter, all of the above. Facebook, look us up. Have your friends like us. Get the at news out. Pass Rugby News. It's all you need to care about. Make sure you get on there and like us. Support us. If you don't like us, I don't care. Tell us anyways. We want to hear it. We want to hear your stuff. And again, matter. thank you so much for listening, and we look forward to hearing you next week. And get a hold of us if you want. That's right. The Pastor of News. Have a good one.